Welcome to Spotlight on the Yards. Today I visit with Tony Cook from Fayette, Missouri, here at the Lamy's Building in Sedalia, Missouri. Rick J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Hello and welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host Rick J. As we turn to, if you will, welcome with me uh, Mr. Tony Cook from Fayette, Missouri. Welcome, Tony. Great to have you here with us today. Rick, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, you know, uh, Mr. Cook, uh, we met at the uh, Missouri State Fair uh, Top 50, where we both had a, a piece of artwork. And so it was great to see that I wanted to get in touch with you and see if I couldn't get you in the, in the guest chair today uh, under the spotlight, if I may. <laughs> so uh, I say again, welcome. Oh, this is your first time. Uh, so, would you tell us a little bit about Mr. Tony Cook, if you would, please? Well, Rick, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, where I was born and raised in Webster Groves in the county. Uh, came from a large family. There were five of us. Uh, my father became ill when I was very young and passed See. when I was 10 years old. My mother raised all of us and did a fantastic job. My. But in the 60s, it was a challenge. Uh, I moved out of the house after dropping out of high school, but I had a plan. Uh -huh. My plan was to get my GED, go to college, and pursue my career, which, which I did. And what age was that, Tony? I dropped out at 17. I worked on the barges on the Mississippi River for three years and started college at age 20. So oh, one see. semester at Umsel and then went to the University of Missouri where I got my bachelor's degree in nursing in 1981. Uh -huh. Wow. Worked as a nurse in rural Missouri, Poplar Bluff, where I met my lovely wife. Uh -huh. I went to North Carolina, Chapel Hill for my graduate studies and got my master's degree in nursing as a nurse practitioner. Oh, I see. And then spent eight years in Illinois, which was about six years too many, uh, because we were away from our family. We moved back to Missouri in 1994, where I became faculty at the University of Missouri School of Medicine, Department oh of Family and Community nice. Medicine. Oh my. And then I worked as a primary care nurse practitioner at a rural clinic in Fayette, where I specialized in geriatrics and the care of those with developmental disabilities. I see. Background. Now you spoke about uh, your wife. Would you like to say hello to the, her and, and maybe any children or grandchildren you might have uh, run into? Well, I absolutely should. Hello, Lisa, my love. Uh, we celebrate our 40th anniversary in January. Excellent. And I could not pursue my love of photography were it not for her being by my side and her patience. Uh, so I've done photography for, for a long time. And for every shot I've taken, she's probably taken a shot of me taking my shot. So she, she's been there. She's always right there with you. She's always been right there. Uh -huh. We have one son, uh, Tyler, who is a graduate of Univers University of Missouri as well. He got his PhD in statistics, and he's a professor of statistics at the University of Central Oklahoma. Excellent, uh, excellent. And they blessed us with a wonderful grandson, Julian. Oh, excellent. So hello to Julian also. <laughs> hello uh -huh. to Julian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, how long then have you really I could say, how long have you been in the, in the position as a photographer? Well, what initially inspired you as a photographer well, to become such? Throughout my life, I've been an outdoors person. Uh, since I can remember, no matter the age, I've always wanted to be outdoors. So I spent all my time outside. Uh, and then when I reached an age where with my friends and family we could travel and go hiking and camping and exploring, that was the best time I could have. Yes. And mm -hmm. that's when I started picking up a camera and taking it on those trips. And that's how I became an outdoors photographer, if you will. So you was inspired by 
the conservation and nature. I Absolutely, guess, inspired uh, by our natural world. Now, as you see that his um, photography is very well shared with you on the timeline as we're speaking and chatting. So uh, you're very well represented. I know I was just impressed, uh, over overwhelmed by some of his work. As you see here on the uh, mantle, we're going to be discussing more of his artwork, his favorites in the second half. So stay with us, there's, there's a lot more. So you've been a, a photographer, so, so how long, you might say? I would say uh, 50 years. Oh, 50 years. Yeah. Well, what inspires you to continue then this? Uh, uh, you spoke of a grandchild. I'll, I'll bet you have some great shots of the, the grandchild also. Well, that's, that's arguable. It depends on, on whom you ask. And in <laughs> fact, for the last several years, I've set photographic goals. Here's what I want to achieve oh. next year. Uh, and apparently, after a conversation with my wife this week, I need to establish a new goal of doing a better job of portrait photography. Uh, I need to do a better job of shooting my grandson. So that's my goal for 2024. Oh, I see. I've never been much of a portrait photographer. Uh -huh. uh, and I've never been an urban street photographer. Uh, so, so I need to work harder at that, Rick. So the goal is just a very small way to focus our energies yes with the overarching principle of I need to keep learning and I need to keep exploring yes keep on trucking as they used to say That's yes right. well very good um, well Tony before time gets away from us can you give us your contact information uh, you know in case someone wants to reach out to you for more information or maybe even a, a, a photography photography shoot because uh, your work is excellent, and uh, I would love to, even personally, you know, I would really call on someone with, with this professional touch to get that great shot, as you'll see on the timeline. So if, can you give us your contact information? I'd love to, Rick. Thank you. Uh, best contact is my email, tonydeancook at gmail.com, no spaces. I also have a Flickr page, so folks oh, yes. who get on Flickr can find me on Flickr, where I, I post quite a few photographs. Excellent. Now, do you are you on Instagram? I uh, am not on Instagram or any other platform. I say I find that as to be one of the best worldwide platforms. Also, one called LinkedIn is more you could say business minded. And so LinkedIn is another great one. I stay away from our FB, known as Facebook, uh, for personal reason, I guess. Uh, so, well, thank you, Tony. That's great. I think we should take a break at this point. So make yourself comfortable and, and as we look at these special messages. After the break, Tony will give us his favorite subject matter, materials basically used or camera equipment, what have you, lighting, uh, used in his special ways of reaching his awesome talent and uh, completing a work of ours, or maybe even some special techniques that he's found that he would like to share with you. So if you would, stay with us. There's a lot more here on Spotlight on the Arts. This uh, facility doesn't look anything like it did when I first saw it. My very first job was right here making Levi's for the J.A. Lamy Manufacturing Company. The uh, people who I worked for 
uh, were great. It was hard work and it was brutal, but the, the uh, family with, that owned the building were fair and honest and they were great to work for. I worked here seven years. My father worked here 21 years and my mother 10 years. And it was just a great place. I've never regretted it. I started out in the uh, shipping department and I graduated up into the cutting room and worked there spreading cloth for most of that period of time. Well, absolutely, Ginger Swearingen would have been the individual who I remember most. She was involved uh, strongly with my uh, acting opportunities and she was director and producer and she was fun to work for as well. I've known the, the whole family for quite a number of years. Uh, staff and, and John and Ginger and Woody and, and they were all customers in, in our business and uh, they've just done a beautiful job with this. It's just beautiful and the people that I talk to who have been customers here and, and visitors have all enjoyed it a great deal. Uh, everyone talks about the, the quality of the food and, and it's just a very entertaining place and I'm looking forward to it. Creative, connection, control. Support the arts and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on fanforme.com. Shreen, Spotlight on the Arts, on GIAJ, Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, AmazonFire.tv, or Apple.tv. Hi, I'm Rick J, and I'm Jeffrey Pernal, and we're here to introduce you to GIAJ, Global Media OTT Network. Hope you'll tune in. Tune in and watch all the great shows by independent producers. Music and film and podcast. Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and or Google us on GIJ Global Media Network. It's a free download now. Thank you. Welcome back everyone to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host, Rick J, and we continue with my special guest from Fayette, Missouri, uh, photographer, Tony Cook. Welcome back, Tony. Before the break, uh, you shared a lot of information, so let's continue along those lines of thought and expression. Would you please describe your type of photography and how that came about with your skills considered? Well, when I began photography, Rick, it was because I was an outdoorsman. So for many, many years, I focused on landscape photography. It wasn't until the last several years, though, that I branched out to do, to do more than just landscapes. Many photographers specialize. Some are portrait photographers. Some are urban street photographers. Some are commercial photographers only doing products. But I focus on the natural world. So I try to catch the world around me, and I try to catch it from an angle or perspective that others might not view. Oh, beauty, beauty is there if we look for it. If we always look at the same scenery the same way, we might miss the beauty. 
So that's one challenge as a photographer, is to get that different perspective. Yes, not only perspective, but lighting comes into play in the great photography. Control of the light. How do you set the f-stop? How do you set the what have you? Now, what type of lighting do you do mostly outside or some indoor, uh, still life maybe, uh, naturally outside? Uh, tell us how you control the lighting. So many of us worldwide as we're speaking, how, how do you determine that? Do you have a light meter you, you hold in your hand? I've seen that before. Go ahead and kind of give us some instruction, some of your skills, sense. Well, lighting is crucial to photography. Many folks have described photography as painting with light. Uh, so it's always a consideration. It begins with planning for the shoot, Rick. I see. Particularly when you're doing landscape photography. And there are many tools that are available to photographers. Many of them are phone apps, for example. I see. I'm going on a shoot tomorrow. I'm going down to southern Missouri. I'm going to shoot a, a river canyon. I'm going to shoot the Milky Way from a fire tower. Oh but to do that, I have to know in advance, what is the path of the sun? What is the path of the moon? Where will I find the Milky Way? So that kind of preparation in advance, particularly for landscape photography, is crucial. So that's putting me in the good light. And photographers speak of good light. You know, the hour or two after the sun rises and the hour or two before the sun sets is the good light. My wife now understands good light and she understands why I'm leaving at five o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. So with landscape photography, that is crucial to understand the world around you, what the sun's doing, what the moon is doing, and where your subject is going to be. Is it gonna be backlit? The light's gonna be behind it? Is it gonna be lit from the sun in front of it? Or do you wanna do a combination? So from a natural lighting point of view, and most of my photography because this landscape is natural light. I will sometimes supplement that with artificial lighting. It depends on the subject. Oh, I see. So if I'm shooting a bridge, if I'm shooting a cemetery, I love cemeteries. Oh. So if I go to a cemetery and shoot a statue in a cemetery or a stone in the cemetery, right at dusk, a little bit of supplemental lighting makes a big difference. So supplemental lighting is, is crucial. So so describe sub supplemental lighting. Uh, some of us don't know about supplemental lighting. Uh, so look into the camera and tell so us here what, in this studio, we have supplemental lighting that is on me and that is yes. on the photograph. It can right. be on a tripod. It can be from overhead. It can be from below. Most of my supplemental lighting is a small rectangular light that is powered by a battery. Outside? And outside, and okay. I can position, and they're very bright, and you can adjust the brightness, you can actually adjust the wavelength of the light so you get the color scheme that you want, sure. uh, and you can posi position them, you might want something lit from below, you might want something lit from above. So you can use many of those small devices to, to provide lighting. There are multiple lights that go on, on the camera, or it can go on the tripod with another light, so there are many options for supplemental lighting. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for explaining that. Uh, my, well, what is your basic uh, process of completing a project? Uh, how do you come about uh, these ideas? They flash in your head, uh, like, <laughs> or do you, you see something, uh, or do you follow a theme, I guess? Uh, how do you come about? <laughs> Rick, it varies, it varies quite a bit, it, and I know you're a painter and you're an artist. And I, I know artists have ideas and plans. I want to do this still life. Or I want to go out on, plan, on plein air and capture the scenery. So some is planned, but as an artist, Rick, it's spontaneous too. You're spontaneous, and photographers in particular are spontaneous. So photographers should have a, and we do have a, camera with us all the time. Uh -huh. So I'm ready to shoot something. So part of being a photographer is being ready and recognizing something that is shot worthy. But yes, most of us go on shoots and, and shoots are driven by particular subjects or particular seasons. And to do a shoot requires, as I discussed earlier, planning in advance. A lot of times this is just environmental planning. It's research on the subject. So. For example, I talked about goals I set for 
a year. This year, one of my goals was cave photography in Missouri. Another goal is I want to be the Missouri photographer. I want to document Missouri. So this year, I set the goal of caves. So I've done a lot of exploration in caves, and I've done a lot of cave photography, which requires special equipment, special techniques uh, to achieve to achieve that goal. So the cave was one, one goal, and now the shoot I described earlier is fall in Missouri, and that's a different kind of shoot. So it, 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 it varies for me as a landscape and nature photography, it's based on the season. It's based on what's happening around me, and it's not limited to any degree. So if there's one technique or process you talk about. What would that be that you'd share maybe with our friends in Brazil or you know, uh, China or Japan, uh, our viewers uh, on the streaming network, GIAJ Plus? What would that technique or process be? Well, I would challenge your viewers and I would challenge those who have cameras to take it off of auto and put it on manual. Learn to use your camera in manual mode. Now, 50 years ago, when I started shooting with the Pentax K1000, there weren't very many options. It was a film camera. Digital came along in the 80s and 90s, and I was slow to adapt the digital. But I have gone digital. And within the last five or six years, the newest, for the most part, change is cameras that do not have a mirror or a mirrorless camera. Yes. I was late to go to a mirrorless camera, but I, but I now have one. But fundamentally, those cameras all achieve the same thing by adjusting how much light gets to the processor. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Folks use auto, and it tells the camera, you can say how big the aperture is and how much light gets through. You can say how long an exposure that you have. Right. You can say what the sensitivity of the processor is or the ISO is. Folks. Take control of those things. Put your camera on, on manual and learn how to use manual. Because the camera is defaulting to an acceptable image. It's not defaulting to an exceptional image. Oh, uh -huh. To get an exceptional image, you tell the camera what to do. Oh, good point, good point. Well, now your finished product, I, uh, I'm really a fan now of uh, uh, the photographers that have now transferring those uh, images to a metal plate or what have you. And I'm really impressed by many of yours, and you will be too uh, as a viewer, as we put in here on the timeline. So what is this process now? That's digital, isn't it? That somehow you transfer that, uh, the uh, painting over our shoulders. Now, is this a digital process? that you've done. Now, maybe we're talking about two different things here uh, on this canvas here behind us and also now to a metal plate that we see here on the, the timeline. It, it is digital. The camera captures a digital image in ones and zeros. The camera processes that image the way you tell it to and you create ones and zeros in your memory card, and then you process those ones and zeros, and most folks or many photographers use Lightroom, for example, ah. and that is then sent to whomever does your production. And it can be printed on paper, it can be printed on canvas, and you mentioned metal. Metal is very popular nowadays, and I have really chosen metal for many of my uh, productions because not only is the quality excellent but the durability is wow. incredible. It's very hard to imagine that um, you know that images can be put on metal nowadays but you know at my age I never even thought about something like that a few years ago. <laughs> so uh, that's really amazing. I'm just so impressed by your work and, and others that are starting to begin to, to do that. Well, uh, see, I want to talk about your favorites or what have you. I noticed this one behind me is 
my favorite, uh, one of my favorites on kind of a canvas. Uh, but yet I'm really impressed by his images on these metal too also. So he brought along uh, one of my, my favorites, kind of going back to the days of when I do remember, uh, you know, a plow, so what have you be, uh, being pulled by a mule as my childhood days. So, well, as a photographer, you have a favorite until you take your next best image. Yes. And then you have a new favorite. Uh, many photographers have favorite subjects. Not only do I enjoy landscapes, but in the last two years, I've really come to appreciate Missouri and its history. Uh -huh. Last year, my wife and I, for the first time, went to the state fair, and I fell in love with the mules. So one of my goals was to go out and get pictures of mules, get pictures of old time agriculture in Missouri. So I, I did some research and found that a festival is held every year in Clark County, Missouri called the Clark County Mule Festival, which I attended uh, and got some great images. And, oh, wow. and this, this is one of them. Uh, and it is one of my favorites until tomorrow. And what's the title of this one? This one is called Hitched. Hitched. Hitched, yeah. So these two mules actually are half-sisters. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, they pulled a, a wagon in, in the festival and they participated in festival events. And, and I just happened to catch them being very kind to one another as they were there waiting to do their job. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, Tony, we're just about out of time. Uh, so, uh, do you have any closing words you'd like to pass on to the viewers? Thank you, Rick. It's been quite a pleasure and honor to sit down and talk with you. Uh, let me ask your viewers, do you know a good photographer? And you do. And if you look in the mirror, you will see a good photographer. We are now all photographers because we all have cell phones. To be a good photographer though also requires that you recognize this is the moment. This is the lighting. This is the place. I need to catch that. So that's the impetus. A good photographer will always be ready and looking for the moment and looking for the light. My wife just returned from a road trip to the northeast. Uh -huh. And there was a photographer on the bus who was teaching the others on the bus how to maximize their photography with their cell phones. And many of them didn't realize that they can adjust two things. So those of you at home, get into the settings of your phone and you can adjust the vibrance and you can adjust the saturation of your image. Uh -huh. And those are the best way to achieve a better image. Excellent. Adjust the vibrance and adjust the saturation. Great. Well, Mr. Cook, I want to thank you once again for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts. And it's been really an inspiring uh, to visit with you. It's been an informational and educational <laughs> experience for everyone. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, that wraps up another look at an inspiring artist, photographer, here on Spotlight on the Arts. I want to thank you viewers for watching and viewing worldwide today. I'm Rick J. saying stay healthy and safe. Don't forget to subscribe to GIAJ, Global Media OT Network. It's a streaming network where you'll see artist interviews of all types. So Rick J. saying thanks again for viewing. I'll see you next time right here on Spotlight on the Arts.